Wheat Check, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston presents Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Cadet Happy is piloting a space observatory while a scientist studies a strange phenomena. It's an invisible force that completely destroys all matter. Right now, Buzz Corey is in Terra the Fifth, warning Happy to veer away from the force, but too late. Out of control, the space observatory whirls toward the invisible menace. Happy! Happy, can you hear me? Pull away from it! I'm trying to, sir, but the rockets don't seem to have any effect! Use full power on your starboard rockets! I am, sir, but we're caught in some sort of a whirlpool! Have hit full repeller ray! If you're caught in there, you're finished! We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Hole in Empty Space! <laughs> Hear that, gang? That's right. Buzz Corey will send you a real, honest-to-goodness Space Patrol space phone set. Sounds just like a walkie-talkie. Looks just like the space phone Buzz Corey himself uses. Imagine, you can talk on it to someone a straight 50 feet away. Now, let me show you with this space phone right here. Uh, calling Bob Rate. Can you hear me, Bob? I'll say loud and clear. Just like talking on the walkie-talkie in the telephone, right? Right. I call it the magic phone you can carry anywhere. Yes, sir. See how the space phone sounds, boys and girls? Just like a telephone. Just like a walkie-talkie. And lots of fun. Yes, sir. So send for your space phone set today. You get two blue and yellow plastic space phones. You get 50 feet of communication cord. You get a space phone briefing sheet. Now, here's all you do to get the entire set. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental U.S. and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. The Space Patrol, with its well-trained personnel, has a very high morale. Disciplinary action is rarely necessary. In fact, a serious infraction of important regulations is so unusual that Commander Corey himself insists on a personal accounting from the man involved. Right now, Buzz is reading a report from the Commandant of the Mercury Patrol Squadron as Happy enters the central office on Terra. Commander. Yes, Happy? Lieutenant Grayson's waiting in the outer office. Oh, thanks. Ask him to come in, please. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Grayson, Commander Corey wants to see you. I'll call you when I'm through here, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, at ease, Lieutenant. Sit down. Yes, sir. You have an exceptionally fine record. I've been looking it over, and so far I can find no explanation for your behavior of the last few hours. I'm sorry, Commander. Is that all you have to say? Except that I'm ready to take the brainograph test. Lieutenant, it shouldn't be necessary to resort to the brainograph to obtain a routine report from a space patrol officer. I realize that, sir. You returned from a routine search mission, three hours overdue and with ammunition expended, yet you refused to offer any explanation. Those are the facts, Commander. I want a straightforward answer. Why didn't you file a report with your commanding officer? Commander, Colonel Gregory is a practical officer. He goes strictly by regulations, by routine. That's hardly a criticism, Lieutenant. I realize that, sir. But if I told Colonel Gregory what happened out there... He'd conclude that I was, well, space-happy. You're not responsible for the conclusions of your commanding officer. In all due respect, Commander, in this case, I'm not so sure. What do you mean? Something's out there in space that regulations don't cover. Commander, I want a brainograph test so I can be sure of myself, sure that my mind isn't playing tricks on me. Grayson, suppose you tell me the whole story. <sighs> all right, Commander. I was about to head back for Mercury when I saw a meteor. I tracked it on the view scope to see if it was headed toward any shipping lanes. Yes, it was still pretty big on the screen when it suddenly vanished. Exploded? No, sir, just vanished. I started after it and checked for fragments. There weren't any. It was just as though... as though the meteor disappeared into a hole in space. A hole in space? I know it doesn't make sense, but that's the only way I can describe it. Nothing showed up on the viewscope. I, I tried both the ultraviolet and infrared scanners. Nothing. 
What about the cosmic missiles you fired? I swung in a wide circle around the point where the meteor disappeared. Suddenly, a black spot appeared on the sun, as though a planet were between me and the sun, an eclipse. But it wasn't a planet? No, Commander. There was no planet within thousands of DUs. There was nothing, no solid object to account for that spot. Well, maybe it was on the sun itself. No, because it moved across the sun in relation to the movement of my ship. That's when I fired the cosmic missiles. What happened? The missiles vanished. Without an explosion? Without an explosion. Lieutenant, that's the strangest story I ever heard. You don't believe me? I didn't say that. I think your account deserves further investigation. You should have told Colonel Gregory. He'd have put me in the infirmary for mental and emotional checkup. I figured I'd get a brainograph test sooner if I risked disciplinary action. And I was right. He sent me here to Terra immediately. That isn't a very wise risk to take, Grayson. Commander, that thing in space, whatever it is, is moving. Moving toward the inner planets. Can you point out the location where you saw it? On that wall chart? Yes, sir. It was approaching the Mercury orbit on a line from the star Myra. About here, sir. How fast was it moving? It seemed to vary, but at the time I wasn't in any condition to make accurate measurements. I thought I was going space happy for certain. Are you ready for that brainograph test? Yes, sir. And come on. Oh, excuse me, sir. Happy, will you get Major Robertson? I want to run a brainograph test. Yes, sir. Oh, here's a top priority bulletin from communications, sir. A robot space freighter vanished. What do you mean, vanished? Well, it suddenly pulled off course. Two passenger ships tracked it. And it swung in a wide circle, then smaller and smaller circles, and then just disappeared. Not a trace on the viewscopes. Where did this happen? Midway between Mercury and Venus, sir. On an orientation line with Myra. Lieutenant Grayson, I think we'll cancel that brainograph test. Happy. Yes, sir. Get my ship ready immediately. I'll notify Colonel Gregory that Lieutenant Grayson is assigned to temporary duty with headquarters. Thank you, sir. As astrogator aboard Terra 5. Commander, we're out beyond the point where the robot freighter vanished. Very good, Lieutenant. Happy established a zigzag course toward the sun. Yes, sir. We'll lace back and forth across the line between the sun and Myra. Reduce our velocity to 10,000 DUs. Right, sir. All view scopes negative, Commander. What's our approximate position, Grayson? In a few minutes, we'll cross the Venus orbit, sir. Well, this is the craziest search I've ever been on, Commander. Looking for something that isn't here. It's there, all right. It just doesn't show up on any instruments. If you could have seen that meteor vanish and those missiles... Oh, wait. There's something moving across the sun. A black spot. That's it. We've located it. Well, let's be certain. Check the viewscope, Happy. Yes, sir. Does anything register? Nothing except the sun itself. Reverse rockets while I turn on the space phone, Happy. We'll hold our present position for the time being. Commander Corey and Terra 5 to Major Robertson at Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra. Commander Corey to Major Robertson. Major Robertson here. Go ahead, Commander. Robbie, we're at the Venus orbit, Sun Myra orientation. We've found what we're looking for. What is it? We don't know. It's visible only as a black spot against the sun. And it definitely is not a solid object. Well, I've contacted Professor Jelka for you, Commander. He's aboard Space Observatory Number 2 off Saturn. Good. Robbie, space phone and all planets bulletin immediately. All shipping is to avoid this sector of space until further notice. Yes, Commander. All commercial, private, and space patrol ships are to evacuate this sector immediately. Roger. Well, Professor Jelka is waiting on the 150 megacycle channel, Commander. Thanks, Robbie. Corey out. Happy switch to 150 MCs. Yes, sir. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Professor Jelka aboard Space Observatory Number 2. Professor Jelka here. Go ahead, Commander. Professor, have you detected any unusual phenomenon in space the last few days in the direction of Myra? Mm, no, no, Commander. There's something out there. Now within the orbit of Venus. It's not a solid object, but it cuts off light from the sun. Well, it's possibly a cloud of gas or tiny particles. Too sharp an outline, Professor. Besides, things like meteors, cosmic missiles, and spaceships just don't disappear permanently in a gas cloud. Did you say disappear? Vanish completely, without an explosion or a trace. Uh, Commander, I must have a chance to study this thing at once. I think I know what it is. It's got us baffled. What is it? I call it a cycloplex. A cycloplex? I wrote a paper about it 12 years ago, purely as a theoretical idea. This is no theory. It exists. This is marvelous, Commander. With your permission, I pulled the space observatory out of the orbit around Saturn and head for your present location. Well, good. No ordinary instruments register it. You might have some that will. Set your vector for Pluto. Where that vector crosses the orbit of Venus, you'll roughly be at our position. Thank you, Commander. I'll contact you when I'm on the vector. Good. Corey out. 
Well, at least there's one man in the solar system who seems to have an idea what this thing is. I hope so. But what's more important, I hope he'll know what to do about it. I've got the observatory in the viewscope, sir. It's only a few DUs away. A very good time, considering. Turn on the space phone, Happy. Yes, sir. Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Professor Jelka. Jelka here. Go ahead, Commander. We've picked up the observatory in the viewscope. Have you located us? Yes, Commander. But I can't detect the cycloplex. I've used several types of detection devices. You'll see the black disc against the sun in a few minutes. We'll join space locks with you and come aboard the observatory. Very good, Commander. Corey out. Grayson. Yes, sir? Well, Happy and I handle the controls. You watch that black spot. If it moves away from the sun, let me know. Right, Commander. We're abreast of the observatory airlock, sir. Oh, good. Stand by with magnetic holding field. Standing by, sir. Corey to Joker. Uh, go ahead, Commander. Professor. Hold your space observatory on an even vector. We're going to make contact. Yes, Commander. Apply magnetic holding field, Happy. Space lock secured, sir. Lieutenant Grayson, keep an eye on the controls. Happy and I will enter the observatory. Yes, sir. Open the inner hatch, Happy. Press the release catch in the observatory hull. Come in, Commander. This is the most thrilling moment of my life. Professor Jelka, it's about the most puzzling moment of mine. Well, this is my cadet, Happy. How do you do, Professor? Uh, how do you do? I tell you, Commander, this is a cycloplex, just as I described it 12 years ago. They really do exist. Well, fine, Professor, but tell me, just what is a cycloplex? Well, uh, well, you might call it a hole in space. That's just the way Grayson described it. Grayson? Lieutenant Grayson, the space patrol officer who discovered it. Professor, this cycloplex has already destroyed a meteor, two cosmic missiles, and a robot spaceship. And that's moving toward the inner planets. If it holds its present direction and velocity, Mars will move right into it in a few days. Ah, uh, that would indeed be a calamity. What's the nature of this thing? What happens to objects that move into it? Well, they are transported into other dimensions. Or perhaps into a matrix of several dimensions. Well, they cease to exist in space as we know it, that's certain. Yes, for years, mathematicians have speculated on the possibility of many separate dimensions existing simultaneously. I'd like to circle around it and study it some more. Or to maneuver the observatory and still manage the instruments. Well, Commander, the controls are very much like standard spaceship controls. Couldn't I work them while the professor handles the instruments? Ah, that would be splendid. All right, Happy, you maneuver the observatory. I'll go back to our ship with Grayson. We'll keep you informed as nearly as we can on the location of the cycloplex. Commander, they're getting pretty close. I'll tell Happy to be careful. Commander Corey to Cadet Happy. Happy here. Go ahead, sir. You're veering pretty close to the cycloplex, Happy. Change your vector. The professor wants me to hold it on this heading, sir. His instruments are beginning to pick up something. Remember what happened to that robot spaceship, Cadet. But this isn't a robot. And the instruments are picking up something. We are on the verge of an exciting discovery, Commander. According to my theory... Well, right now, Professor, I'm relying on Grayson. He's had practical experience with this thing. Happy, this is an order. Pull away from the cycloplex. Yes, sir. Look at the observatory. It's whirling toward it. Happy, pull away from it. I'm trying to, sir, but the rockets don't seem to have any effect. Use full power on your starboard rockets. I am, but we're caught in some sort of a whirlpool. That hit full repeller ray. If you're caught in that cycloplex, you're finished. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Hi, gang. Space Patroller Dick Tufeld speaking from the planet Earth. Today I'm doing a man-on-the-street report. Going to see what some of these young fellows here on their way to school think about those three checkerboard super cereals, Rice Chex, Wheat Chex, and Instant Ralston. Now, here's a sharp-looking lad. Uh, say, tell me, what did you say the very first time you tried delicious Wheat Chex, that bite-sized super cereal spun out of shredded wheat? What did I say? I said... Enough said. Thank you. Now, here's a fine-looking boy. Uh, say, what do you think of Rice Chex, the bite-sized super cereal made of crisp and crunchy shredded rice? Uh, what did you say, for example, the very first time you tried it? 
Thank you. That's good enough for me. And here's another young man. Tell me, what's your opinion of Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal? Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> there you are, gang. That's what these fellows think about the checkerboard super cereals. The only three official cereals of the Space Patrol. Try them yourself. You'll say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Get them at your grocers today in the red and white checkerboard packages. The super cereals that help to supercharge you, rice checks, wheat checks, and to warm up your motor, good hot Ralston. A space patrol officer, Lieutenant Grayson, has discovered an alarming peril in outer space, an invisible force that completely destroys matter without leaving a trace. Professor Jelka, an astronomer and mathematician, says this force, which he calls a cycloplex, is actually a hole in outer space. Happy, piloting the space observatory for the professor, flew in too close to the strange force. Now the observatory is being whirled closer and closer to disaster. Meantime, Commander Corey and Lieutenant Grayson in Terror the Fifth are trying desperately to find a way to save Happy and Professor Jelka. Happy, is your repeller ray on full? Yes, sir. All rockets on the starboard side and stern as well. The observatory is being pulled faster than ever toward the cycleplex. Jelka never should have ordered Happy to go so close. The observatories have a very low power ratio in proportion to their mass, Grayson. We can only give it a boost with our own power. You mean make magnetic contact with the observatory? Yes. Great idea, Commander. You realize what'll happen if we fail? I'm waiting your orders, Commander. And let's go. You handle a magnetic holding field, Grayson. Yes, sir. Commander, what are you doing? I'm going to tow you away from the cycloplex. Don't try it, sir. There's some sort of a whirlpool effect. A vortex, the professor calls it. There are five may have enough power to pull itself and the observatory out of danger. But, sir, you can't... The sooner we act, the better chance we'll all have. Stand by for orders. Standing by, sir. We're ready to make contact, Happy. Grayson, apply magnetic holding field. Yes, sir. All right, Happy. Keep the observatory rockets on full power. Yes, sir. We're going to increase our own power slowly at first. We won't try to fight the cycloplex force too strongly. We'll cut across at a tangent, understand? Yes, Commander. Here we go. Is it working, Commander? I can't tell yet. Happy. Yes, sir. As I increase the ship's power, it'll put a terrific strain on the hull of the observatory. Watch for any sign of damage. I will, Commander. There's that sound again. What is it? It's coming from the space phone system. Happy, do you hear it? Yes, sir. You're picking it up from the professor's instruments. He says it's caused by the cycloplex. Commander, our vector's changing. We're moving away from the cycloplex. We'll add a little more power. Happy, did the professor turn off his instrument? No, sir. Then we're free of the cycloplex pull. That's right, sir. We're swinging away in the other direction. Good. Wow. What a relief. Happy, we'll proceed several DUs away from this position until we're sure we're safe before we break contact. Yes, sir. Then we'll join space locks and come aboard the observatory. Got it? Yes, Commander. I'll maintain vector till further orders. Check. Corey out. Commander. Well, how did the observatory stand up under that pull? Well, apparently quite well. Smoke and rockets, Commander. For a while there, I thought we were all going to plunge right into the core of that cycloplex. I thought so too, Happy. Professor, did you manage to find out anything about this phenomenon? Very little. Although it did finally activate some of the instruments. And exactly what is it, this force? I can't say. Apparently, this vortex, the whirlpool effect, is some sort of an electromagnetism. And that might account for its effect on the instruments. And this whirlpool effect extends beyond the core. Yes. It draws the objects into the center if they get too close. We sure found that out. And we also know that this force is moving steadily toward Mars. We've got to get busy and do something. Is this cycloplex big enough to swallow a whole planet? What about that, Professor? Well, the core itself is fairly small. But with that vortex of force around it, it might easily demolish Mars. Certainly, it would make it unlivable. How can we fight this cycloplex? Every force we know of has some other force that can oppose it. But this thing is from some other dimension, Commander. It's an intruder into our space-time system. You mean it isn't even from, from another galaxy? From another part of our space? Yes, it's completely new to us, Cadet. It's impossible to imagine dimensions beyond the three we know. Length, breadth, and thickness. Huh? Professor, you mentioned that it has some sort of magnetic effect. That's right, Suppose we could produce a powerful magnetic force to oppose it. Mm, it 
would take more power than any planet power system could produce. And how could we transfer it here? Professor, you've heard of Huddleston's ring, haven't you? Uh, yes. A very interesting effect. What's Huddleston's ring, sir? It makes use of an effect that occurs at temperatures close to absolute zero. Oh, like those of outer space? Exactly. Extremely low temperatures, some metals become superconductors of electricity. Superconductors? They have no resistance to the flow of current. Oh. That means if a current is started in a ring made of a superconducting material, it flows indefinitely. Even when the power is cut off? Right. And if the power is constantly applied, the current builds up. It increases more and more. Oh, I see. A scientist named Huddleston has been conducting experiments with a giant ring in outer space near Jupiter. Yes. He has a laboratory spaceship in the center of the ring. Suppose that Huddleston turns the power on full, charging that ring and the magnets around it, and keeps the power on. Would it destroy the cycloplex? Mm, perhaps it would be dangerous. A magnetic force of incredible intensity would be built up. There is no telling. Professor, I want to send Huddleston's ring into that cycloplex. Under robot control, naturally. Well, Professor, do you think it would work? I don't know. But it's a challenging experiment. If it did, it would prove that electromagnetism is a force common to all dimensions of existence. Right now, I'm not interested in proving any theory. I want to save Mars. Happy, let's get back to Terra 5. I want to contact Huddleston. Cycloplex seems to be moving steadily toward Mars, Commander. Keep the ship moving with it, Grayson. Keep that black circle right in the center of the sun. Yes, sir. Major Robertson, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. I'll take it. Happy to hand me that vector analysis, please. Here you are, sir. Corey here, Robbie. Go ahead. We've contacted Huddleston, Commander. He's all enthused over the idea. Oh, good. How long will it take him to get the ring on the way? Does he have to convert the controls to robots? No, a robot unit was built into the ship. Huddleston's in the ring waiting for your instructions. Well, here's the procedure, Robbie. Huddleston will pull out of the orbit around Jupiter under manual control. Check. When he's on the vector, which I give you in a minute, a space patrol cruiser will pick him up in space. Huddleston will handle the ring and its slab ship by remote control until we pick it up on our view scope. Got it, Commander. Then I'll take control of the ring from that point on. Okay, Robbie. Now here's the vector I want you to relay to Huddleston. Nothing in the view scope yet, sir. Widen the scanning arc, Happy. The lab ship may be slightly off vector. Yes, sir. Uh, Commander. Yes, Grayson. Cycloplex seems to be increasing velocity. Any change in vector? No, sir. I'll check with Professor Jelka. Corey to Jelka in observatory. Uh, Jelka here. Go ahead, Commander. Lieutenant Grayson reports an increase of velocity by the cycloplex. He's right, Commander. My calculations confirm it. Is it still heading toward Mars? Yes, Commander. Is there any possibility of its changing direction? Uh, I'm afraid its motion is unpredictable. We don't know enough about it. Well, that's all, Professor. Thank you. Commander, look at the view scope. I never saw an image like that before. It isn't very clear, Happy. See if you can get rid of that blur. I'll try it, sir. No, sir. That's as clear as I can get it. I'll check with Robbie. Commander Corey to Major Robertson. Robertson here. Go ahead, Commander. We picked something up in the view scope, but it doesn't look like Huddleston's ring and lab ship. Have you got a blurred blotch? Yes. Now, that's the ring, Commander. I've been tracking it from Jupiter. Huddleston says your screen's blur is a tremendous magnetic force. Right, Robbie. I'm ready to take over control of the ring. It's now 14.20 and 15 seconds, universal start time. Tell Huddleston the switchover will occur at 14.21. Corey out. The ring's approaching very fast, Commander. The robot control panel's ready, sir. Fine, Grayson. Happy you take over our controls. Yes, sir. Grayson, feed the view scope data into the vector computer. Yes, sir. I want to get the ring headed for the target as soon as possible after switchover. It might be hard to control if that magnetic force builds up much higher. Ten seconds to switchover. Trajectory computed, Commander. Thanks, Grayson. Five seconds. Three. Zero. Now we'll find out if we've got the ring under control. Watch the view scope, Grayson. See if the ring turns in the new vector. It's responding, Commander. Good. It's heading straight for the cycloplex now. Nothing to do but wait and hope it works. few more seconds, we'll know. Yeah, Huddleston's ring is practically in the outer field of the vortex now. Nothing's happening, though. Wait. The blur around the lab ship seems to be dimming. It's as though the cycloplex were choking down the magnetism. Look, you can see the outline of the ring now. And the lab ship. I'm afraid it's not going to work, Commander. The power of the cycloplex is too strong. Wow, look at that. The lab ship just flew apart. The ring is still intact. The blur is building up again. The magnetic force pulled the ship apart. The ring's in the black circle now. Something's happening. It's a battle of magnetic forces. 
The black circle is growing smaller. It sure is. It's shrinking rapidly. If that ring can hold up long enough, the, the cycloplex is just a black dot. It's gone. The cycloplex is gone, Commander. It worked. Whew. Look at the view scope, man. Huddleston's ring is still there. Thanks to you, Commander. It saved a planet. It took all of us. Enter the story in our logbook, Happy. Yes, sir. What a mission to describe. We've just filled in a hole in empty space. Hey, uh, maybe I should make the log entry in invisible ink. <laughs> we'll be back with an exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, it's got things popping everywhere. It's setting the world on fire. It's even stopping traffic. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Space Patrol Spaceophone, and I'm going to tell you how to get a set. A set complete with two spaceophones, 50 feet of communication cord, and an official briefing sheet on spaceophoning. What an offer. What an invention. The magic phone you can carry everywhere. Sounds like the walkie-talkie in the telephone. Barrels of fun. You can talk to someone standing a straight 50 feet away. Now, I'll show you with this spaceophone here. Hello, Commander Corey. Hi, Dick. Hi, gang. Aren't these spaceophones terrific? You can play space patrol with them just as though you were a real space patroller living up here on Terra. Yes, sir, gang. Your spaceophone will look exactly like the one space patrollers use. Only yours will be even more terrific because they're a special model made for use on Earth alone. And good looking, too. And some blue and yellow plastic. Now don't wait. Send for your spaceophone set today. Complete with two spaceophones, 50 feet of cord, and a briefing sheet. Now here's all you do. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then with your name and address. Send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have been captured by two criminals and are aboard a relay space station near the Pluto orbit. While the criminals are removing a secret power unit, Buzz and Happy are locked in a passageway looking for some method of escape. The lights. What happened to the lights? They must have disconnected the Cosmolite power unit. They'll be coming through the passage in a minute to get us, Commander. They won't need to, Happy. Stecker has already figured out how he's going to get rid of us. How? When they get back into their ship, they're going to leave the relay station airlock open. What? In a few seconds, this passage will be a complete vacuum. Every bit of air will escape into space. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Glow Worm Project, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! And now, a special message from Commander Corey. Boys and girls, this is your commander. I'm now holding an important bottle. When empty, it's worth very little. When filled, it's the most valuable bottle in the world. I mean, when it's filled with the greatest gift one person can give to another, his own blood. America has millions of these bottles to fill, and any grown-up can fill them. So, gang, will you help me get that message across to every grown-up in the USA? Then do this. Join the Space Patrol blood boosters now. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, Dick Beals, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. 